So just so you're aware, we're going to be covering topics um, around mental health and depression and low mood, things like that in this video. So if this is something that you are struggling with or you have struggled with, know that there is support out there. We're going to put some links um, in the below the video in the description. So if this is something that might be triggering for you, um, maybe give this video a miss and you can find all of our other videos on our main YouTube channel, Can I Be Candid Show, um, so check those out. I think sometimes going out and exercising is actually too big of a step, it's too overwhelming. And I don't think it's fair to just say, oh, well, too bad. I was feeling so depressed that I couldn't even bring myself to go to the gym or do, mm -hmm. do simple exercises, but then what I did was... It's okay to have crutches. Mm. It's why they, the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. Like... It, it makes me happy that you're, you're doing good. Yeah, so someone was asking me the other day um, if I have any advice for symptom management around mental health. Um, just kind of if you're experiencing some general mental health issues, if there's anything that you can do about it. And I thought it'd be really interesting to put the question to you um, in terms of what are your approaches, what are the foundational approaches um, that you look into when struggling a little bit? I mean, can I just start by saying like mental health and depression is a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, for someone who went through depression, severe depression, yeah. like, you know, people, you know, as you many know, I'm a very jolly, happy, go lucky person. And I've always got a big smile on my face. But depression for me was something I like I kind of like hid from a lot, hid a lot from a lot of people, but I had to talk about it because I was on Sotilopram for nearly two and a half years and the come down from the medication was tough. Mm -hmm. And depression like for me one of the biggest things that i found was acceptance accepting that you are feeling depressed mm -hmm. is being able to say like with confidence like listen i'm going through a tough time and hard time mm -hmm. and i don't mean like speaking like just speaking to everyone that will like listen to you because like you know i went through a phase of trying to talk to a lot of like my close group of friends about it but it was tough as well because you don't realize, but other people are going for their own level of sadness. Mm. And there's a difference between depression and sadness. There's a really big difference between two because we're allowed to have moments of feeling sad, but depression is like this underlying thing of just constant feeling sad. And for me, like I, I personally, when I was feeling the real like root, deep down depression it was constant there was like uh, something happy could happen and i would put this big fake smile on my face of like yeah oh my god is everything so happy and excited but i was so so down in the dumps and there was so many things contribute to the fact of that but coming out the back end of it now was there were so much things that I learned that I could do and I could speak to and I spoke to you a lot about it. We worked through it together. You supported me in getting on to Sir Tyler Pram and making sure that I was like maintaining my dosages and stuff. But there's so many simple things someone can do to support their anxiety, to support their mental health. And it's so basic but for some reason, like, we're focusing on, like, just talk therapy. Listen, you can talk through everything. T talking through a problem doesn't solve it. Because you go to a therapist, right, and you sit down with a therapist. You can, and by the way, I had therapy, went to a therapist, and I chatted to my therapist, and he, he was a lovely guy, but he did fuck all for me. And I'm not saying therapists are bad. Please don't, like, don't misconstrued me. But what was happening was when I was going for that therapy and sitting in those chairs and talking to him, what I had to understand was that I was merely voicing my opinion, but at the end of it, it was still up to me to make the changes because it's down to you to make the changes. And you have to understand that if you're going for depression, it's down to you to make the change. You can't blame anyone else. You can't blame society. You can't blame the people around you. You have to make the change yourself. T's looking at me like in a weird kind of way because I'm saying this now. No, I just have a few, I, I guess I'm thinking a few things in terms of, I think with that particular case, it probably wasn't the right 
therapist for you, but yeah. I don't think you were in a place where you were particularly receptive to therapy either. Um, but I also mm-hmm. agree, I don't actually think therapy is the answer in all cases. I do think it's a tool. I've used therapy very, very successfully, and I've also used it unsuccessfully. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it depends on your mindset. I By the way, not bashing therapists once again <laughs> before anyone misconstrues anything I says and starts saying he's bashing therapist. Listen, if therapy is helping you, that's amazing. Yeah. Not bashing therapists. I do think there are incredible therapists out there. I do think you need to question though if therapy is helping you because from my experience, I definitely see two approaches to therapy. I think if there's something that you know, you need to work through and uh, through conversation, I think that can be helpful. And your purpose is to work through this issue and then kind of grow from it. Mm. I think therapy can be really useful. I do think that sometimes um, in therapy, it can be used as a means of just value or validating your every feeling and whim and emotion and kind of can almost feed this idea that I'm I'm depressed and you know something's wrong and everything's wrong and I need to work through everything to the nth degree personally I don't see the value in in that approach Mm. um but it's the same way in terms of you know your own experience with depression and even using the word depression I think we have to be very very careful because I think diagnoses are thrown around very easily at the Mm. moment and I think labels do matter And I think there's a differentiation between there's clinical depression, but then also I strongly, strongly believe, fundamentally believe that depression is something that we can all feel. And most of us do feel at some points, but it's not something that has to be permanent. It's not something that has to be this clinical condition that you Mm. can never overcome. Um, nutrition you know because I just say like to add to what you just said there I didn't realize the role nutrition played in depression yeah, 100%. because it wasn't just like vitamin D and supplementing it but exercise breathing mm. all the things that you introduced me to um, my journey in breathing started because of you yeah. you literally showed me one video and like I like this video you showed me was like I think I've now become like the breathing guy in our relationship because I, all I do is I do some yeah. mad I like literally drive and I'll do a breathing exercise. I was trapped on the M6 motorway coming back from a conference and I was literally trapped on the motorway and in the ten minutes of standstill traffic I did a six minute breathing video like it but you literally opened that door and I remember having this I was really anxious because I was meeting some friends that I hadn't seen for like a couple of months and and you said do the breathing video and I did it and I was like my god yeah do the breathing video and then see how you feel Mm. but what you said right there is a really important point in the in the sense that I don't think that there's any one thing that can solve depression or feeling sad just mental health there's There's you need to kind of you don't necessarily need to address every angle. It's up to you. But you need to be aware that there's multiple angles. So if you're feeling really, really down in the dumps and say you choose talk therapy, that can be really helpful to an extent. But if you also have some nutrient deficiencies or you have some habits that are feeding the way you're feeling or maybe your environment is feeding, you know, your depression or your sadness and you're not making any changes in that, then you're unlikely to overcome that and move on from it in a big way. It's probably going to be something that keeps coming up for you. So I think that's an important thing to consider. And equally, if you're you know, maybe aware of the nutritional aspects and you're, you know, optimizing your nutrients and you're eating a good diet and you're getting lots of exercise, but actually you have uh, an environmental or situational reason that's triggering depression, like being around people that aren't good for you or being in a bad um, housing situation or financial situation or any of these things that can affect us, then probably depression will continue um, with you in your journey. Um, And also, even if you address all of these things, it's actually part of human nature to have kind of like peaks and valleys. So like to feel great some days and to feel a little bit down some days. And so there is a level of that that's 
normal and okay. I think it's when you're feeling that consistent feeling down like like you did. And I was, you know, I remember a lot of those, the things that were contributing to your depression were situational. So which is why we made the decision to look at medication, because, again, non-anti-medication, I think that there's a place and a time, particularly for short term use, mm. um, because there were a lot of situational things that were going to take time to um you know, move out of and improve. Um, so I think having that extra support at that time. Um, but let's get into a few things to consider just in terms of foundational pieces. So start with the nutrition side of things. You mentioned vitamin D. If you are feeling low or you have consistent like low moods or feelings of sadness, particularly around kind of your hormonal cycle, Go out and get a vitamin D test right now. Um, check your vitamin D levels, optimize them. Um, some other things, B vitamins, really, really important for your mental health, um, particularly B12, B6 and B2, because B2 is really important for your adrenal. So if there's stress that you feel like is triggering that low mood, B2 and vitamin C are really important to support that adrenal cycle. Um, magnesium, massive one. Another reason that I rest my case in terms of talking about magnesium all the time. You put your heart on that. <laughs> but it, like, I know I talk about it all the time, but there's a reason. So it's another one. A really gentle way into magnesium is having a magnesium bath, um, using a magnesium spray. Definitely things to consider. Um, from a dietary perspective, I mean... I hate to say this because I do love my chocolate, but sugar can be a real trigger for low mood because it's very pro-inflammatory um, and inflammation will impact um, how you're feeling. So that's one thing to consider. Obviously, just eating loads of junk and processed food is not going to do you any favors. Increasing your micronutrient levels and macronutrient levels across the board. Protein is so important. Um... And what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah, healthy fats. So we talk about this all the time, but, you know, improving the quality of your fats, whether it's getting your omega-3, which we talk a lot about for brain health and mood, but also... And not just buying a cheap omega-3. Yeah. Find yeah. a good omega-3. Uh, it's actually worse to supplement with a poor quality omega-3 or fish We've oil or olive it. oil than to get a good quality one so if all if all you're willing to do is supplement with a poor quality one just eliminate it completely it's not worth it it's probably doing more damage because oxidized fats are really really bad for you um so even just switching out your cooking oils and things as well so like switching to extra virgin olive oil um ghee butter things like that get rid of the rapeseed oil, the vegetable oils, the sunflower oils, all of those different things. Any Indians listening, send this to your uh, send this to your family and send it across to them because my God, yeah. so much vegetable oil used in it, man. Yeah. It's so bad for you. But go back because like traditionally the use of ghee came from India, I believe. So like go back to your your roots. Like I mean Ghee is such a good quality cooking oil. It's just a shame that we're not using it as much anymore. I guarantee you someone's going to have a problem with you saying that because there are so much conversations on ghee but and even like the different oils that people are using. But you know what? Uh, I'm going to get in so much trouble. Yeah, but you know what? It's 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 the truth. Yeah. The truth is, speaks louder, doesn't it? Yeah. Another foundational thing that I really wanted to talk about, which I feel like you're super passionate about, is the idea of grounding. Um, because we talk about exercise a lot in terms of mental health. And I, I do believe that exercise is really important for mental health. But as someone that's been there in a bad place, I think sometimes going out and exercising is actually too big of a step. It's too overwhelming. And I don't think it's fair to just say, oh, well, too bad. If you're not exercising, if you're not willing to exercise, too bad for you, you know, Um so I think actually a first step is just getting outside and grounding. Going for a walk. Yeah, going for a walk, breathing some fresh air. But even if going for a walk is too much, um, 
open a window and breathe some fresh air in. Open some windows, let some fresh <laughs> Don't air get into fresh your house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you mean, but like I'm talking about like people that are in a really, really bad place and feel like yeah. they can't even get outside. Like just do that much. If you're lucky enough to have a garden where you live or a local park, try just try to get yourself there. Take off your shoes, put your feet in the ground, um, and grounding is such an incredible thing there's basically an exchange of um, ions. ions and electrons that your body will pull up from the ground and it literally the electrons the free there. electrons mm. act like an antioxidant in your body so like think about how much effort it is well I shouldn't say it's effort, but like a lot of people would consider it a big effort to change their diet or increase their fruits and vegetables or their healthy foods like compare that to just standing barefoot in the ground, in the grass, like it's giving you the same thing. I mean, you need both for different reasons, but like just think about the level of effort. Mm. And you're a massive fan of grounding. Well, yeah, because like you'll catch me, you know, I try to go at least once or twice, well, once a day at least, at the very least, yeah. I'll try and do it. And I'll just walk and just put my feet in the ground or even touch the ground or touch a tree or something. And I find like, I can always tell because I've always sleep better that night. I found that as I started to ground, I sleep better. But to move on to like the grounding, what I found was really quick and easy was breathing. Mm. You know, like doing something as simple as like, I think Andrew Huberman did, had his breathing exercise, which is basically you take a sharp inhale for the mm. nose and then a small little inhale and then you breathe it out through like your lips. So you go, <sighs> sorry, I didn't remember. It's go, you go, <sighs> He said, literally doing that three or four times, you can feel the cortisol and your body's relaxing. And oh my God, even now, just doing that Even quickly. just doing that. That's why I was like so, getting yeah. on that. I was like, oh, actually, I just feel more energized and it just feels relaxing. I can hear Aaron doing it in the background. <laughs> <laughs> feel good? Oh yeah, let's link I'll that. Link the video breathing breathing video below. I'll start, we'll start doing, or should I say I'll start, we'll start doing more videos on breathing. We should actually. And I'll link up some people that I follow personally yeah. for on, on YouTube for breathing videos. And I'll link that video that I got you on to first and that really brought us into the sphere mm. of breathing because it was actually when I was um, trying to do more meditation in my life and I just felt like I had, done all this research and I knew how beneficial meditation was but I just felt like for whatever reason I had this block and I could not make myself meditate on a regular basis but breathing was actually the place that really brought me into meditation um, because if you sit down and you do you can do literally like literally like a five to seven minute breathing session we're not even talking like 20 minutes here we're talking five minutes sitting down and having something kind of physical something to actually do mm -hmm. really really helped me get into a more balanced regulated relaxed state and I found that by doing that first I actually naturally could just close my eyes and bask in the like really nice tingly feeling after breathing and then end up meditating for you know five ten fifteen minutes more and it was really a good bridge into that activity that I've struggled to get into mainly because of the monkey mind and not being able to stop thinking before so I just found that a really nice process and it helped me be more regular yeah I mean and there's like to, to help people through this I'm going to link the interview um we did with Emma from Movement is Medicine. Yeah. Dancing, music, and movement is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Like literally being able to, like you know, you talked about not being. Some people don't can't do the exercise. Do you know what got me off the satyropram? It was exercise, mm -hmm. and because. But what I found was I needed satyropram in order to do the exercise, which is crazy because I was feeling so depressed that I couldn't even bring myself to go to the gym or do mm. do simple exercises. But then what I did was use a satyropram in order to unlock the other aspects. So I used satyropram to balance my emotions, start with like nutrition, looking at what I was supplementing, looking at what I was eating. Then I started exercise. Well, actually I started breathing first. Then I started exercising. And now then meditating, then grounding. And all my spirituality started opening up apart from, apart from the back of that. But it's, it's um, to kind of go back to it, 
doing basic things like just you know even sitting in a chair and just like stretching out and like fully stretching your muscles out you feel such a release of like energy from your body, your body and yeah. then like going oh, like you just it's such a it's a small thing but when you do it it's those little small incremental things we've just got this like idea that when we do this breathing exercise we're suddenly going to resolve all the issues in our life it's not it's little tools of these little tools that you've got in your box that you can use to just make these little changes, incremental differences, and they all make a change. Don't just think that the one conversation you're going to have with someone is going to change it. And you can make lasting change, but it's not the Amazon effect where it's going to happen immediately. And we've done a, a video about this. The Amazon effect is not possible in health. It's a long game. It's a long, it's a long game. Or satisfaction. Yeah. You know, the the journey and the effort is often what brings the satisfaction. Yeah. But what you were saying as well, I think is important in that, you know, I personally believe it's okay to have crutches. Yeah. Like, it's okay to use crutches sometimes as long as you recognize that you are using a crutch because as you say like when you're feeling really 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 down in the dumps often you your body your whole body feels drained and you just feel like i cannot do anything mm. and often you don't even want to do anything positive for yourself because it just feels so overwhelming so if there's something that maybe it's not, you know, the healthiest thing in the world, like, you know, taking a drug or, you know, maybe you're not eating, going straight to eating the healthiest foods. If there's an in-between that isn't, you know, massively going to harm you, um, then maybe that's OK sometimes if it can bring you to that better place. We don't have to go from zero to perfect because often what happens is we never get we never improve at all because it seems like too high of a mountain to climb but it's okay to use little crutches and take steps along the way and in, yeah and improve and improve you know you don't need to go from eating mcdonald's to eating the salad in one step mm -hmm. you can do lots of in between steps and actually that can be really good for helping your body adapt and grow um, it's why they, the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. Like even your health, your lifestyle, it wasn't built in a day. We, I talk about athletes, but when I say athletes, I mean like, you know, people that are picture of health or whatever you want to call them. That wasn't built in a day. It takes time. A business wasn't built in a day. You didn't just go from being this to this in, in space a day. Everything takes time. But we're so like health and life isn't about the the, the the end goal. It's about the journey that we go mm -hmm. on. And when you realize it's a journey and every day and every part of it's different, you will feel so much more happier in the states that you are now because you do feel happy in that place where you mm -hmm. are right now. One thousand percent. If anyone has like goes has gone through the depression side of things and please share your story it's so lovely to hear people's comments and the story and what you went through and you know it will be really interesting for other people to see to talk about what you did to shape your depression mm -hmm. and have you been on satilopram how did you find coming off it because that's another thing that we need to be spoken or any um ssri yeah. or um, ssri yeah like what medication. have you been on and gone through because it's so fascinating i think to hear about mm -hmm. these people's stories so please mm -hmm. do share and you know if you are going through it now and going through a hard time i hope this this um this video really resonates with you because these are we're just talking about in a in i wouldn't say like a, a as some in some parts deep and in some parts generalized but what we're doing we hope this resonates with you because mm. you can and will get better but just give your body time and i kind of feel like these um approaches that we discussed are useful no matter where you are in terms of your mental health right now yeah because you know we're like we talk about these things because we've been through them but just because we've been through them doesn't mean that we're not yeah. going to go through them again or we don't experience flashes of it like i i i think there'll always be moments of up and down and just to realize that there are these tools no matter what level you are at the moment find the one that you know helps bring you to a better place or helps you know you feel a little bit better and then when you're feeling a little bit better 
have a look at the other options and maybe mm. try one of those. And then you feel a little bit better again. And then maybe you try something else. And then you and you incrementally start feeling better and better and better. And as you start feeling better, you can do more. You feel you get the confidence. Sorry. You get the confidence that you can you can do more and you can grow more. And, you know, all of a sudden you find yourself in a situation where you're like, oh, I barely even remember feeling like yeah. that or like, God, that feels like forever ago. Um, and you deserve to you deserve to le- live a life where you feel well and you have, you know, an optimistic outlook sometimes. And, mm. you know, you're surrounded by people that make you feel good and things that make you feel good. I think we all deserve that. 100%. And remember, Poe Body's Nerf Act. <laughs> <laughs> Poe body's perfect. <laughs> it's a, it's my favorite saying because it's so so true. It's it's so so true because realistically, that's the the main point of it is that if something doesn't work for you, it's fine. It's okay mm. for something not to work for you. It's all good. But yeah, thanks everyone. This was such a fun. Uh, thank you, T. This was such a fun conversation. I forget how far we've come. Yeah, it it makes me happy that you're you're doing good. We're all doing good. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully that insight can be helpful to some people. Um, Cause yeah, we're learning too, and we got this. <laughs> Cheers. Cool. Bye.